Hello, I'm Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I'm out here in the wetland today to tell you all about cleavers, or gallium aparine. It's a wonderful herb, a spring tonic that's perfect to pick this time of year. Um, this is a plant you may know is kind of the Velcro plant. It's got these little Velcro-like barbs on it and it will stick to your clothes. But uh, anywhere past this kind of flowering stage where it's at right now, it'll get these little balls, the little seed balls, which will stick in your socks and every part of your socks will just cover your socks. And it's pretty miserable. So that's why we like to harvest it before that time. <laughs> um, and that time is now. Look at this beautiful, beautiful set of cleavers behind me. They're everywhere. They're also growing up into the middle of these horsetails. But for the most part, we've got a giant patch of cleavers here. And they're all just about to bloom, so it's a really great time. So the cleavers, now what they are really great for as a spring tonic is to boost the immune system by flushing kind of the toxins and bad elements out of your body through your lymphatic system mostly. And the lymphatic system it's a, a bunch of little nodes. It, well, you know how you have your arteries and your veins, and everybody knows you've got the, these big whole series, this whole network of arteries, and then eventually that blood goes back up through the veins. Um, but there's another system that most people don't know about, and it's the lymphatic system. It is all over your body, little lymph nodes and there's some lymphatic organs, and they're all connected um, by these lymphatic vessels. They're basically, they're a little bit bigger than your smallest capillaries, your smallest arteries, but they're a little bit smaller than your smallest veins, and they're just kind of a more a squishy system. Now, in your lymph nodes, you have a lot of immune cleansing well, white blood cells, like little Pac-Man that eat up cellular debris, or chunks of viruses or bacteria that your body is trying to get rid of. And it just collects all that water that's seeped through your cells and just into those inner tissue spaces. That all gets sucked up and pushed through the lymphatic system and eventually it comes up um, kind of under your collarbone and gets flushed back out. So it's a great way to get rid of the, the toxins Cleavers help get rid of the toxins and cellular debris and excess lymph that's stuck up in any kind of stuck lymph fluid, uh, stuck lymph tissues. Um, cleavers will help for that. And in doing so, they also help with kidney function. They're a diuretic as well, so they're good for, like, if you're trying to flush your kidneys out for your urinary tract infection, for instance. Um, also helpful for supporting the liver. Um, just generally really great for immune boosting, especially in the springtime. They're most powerful when they're fresh, but they can be used in other ways. And we'll take them back to the kitchen after I harvest some of these. Um, but yeah, you wanna use these if you have like really lumpy lymph tissues after, say, a bad cold or flu or a lot of dust exposure. You might end up with a lot of just gelled up lymph. Um, yeah, if you want to get your lymph moving, if you're having swelling in your legs and you just need your fluids to kind of go back where they're supposed to go, this is the one you want for that. So let's harvest some of this now. Brought my trusty basket. And these are really easy to harvest. You just want to pull pretty much the whole plant. You don't really want the root, so you'll cut the root off eventually. But basically you just grab, grab big handfuls of this. It comes apart really easy. You don't even need any kind of trimmers. This is stuff that often grows in your garden and then to a gardener's nightmare, they hate it, but it actually is a wonderful herb that should be 
gathered in its time. Just so much of it I don't even have to get up. Well, that should be enough. See these cleavers? Let me see if I can get you a little closer. You can see they have a square stem with little tiny prickly bits on it. Those are the little Velcro bits. They come up to this flower here. These are starting to flower. It's a, quite a lovely plant at this stage of things, but uh, later on when those little balls get on there, ooh, they're gonna stick everywhere and you're not gonna like it at all. You don't want those in your path. So these cleavers really are sticky. Let me show you how much my friend is going to toss some at me. <laughs> Isn't this kind of fun? You just uh, Velcro <laughs> just sticks right there. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Okay, here we are, and uh, got our big pile of cleavers. We got to chop it up. We're gonna do three things with this today. We are going to um, tincture some of that in an alcohol. That's just a, basically a vodka, 80 proof vodka. We're going to make a cold infusion, a cold tea with some of this. And the rest of it we're going to dry and make into a oil for rubbing, a lymphatic well for rubbing on uh, your skin over your lymphatic tissues to absorb in that way. And also that that's a really good way to get the lymph to move is to, to rub your lymph tissue towards your heart. So let's just start by, I guess, filling this little tea thing here. Now, we've got our basic uh, system of destruction here. We've got our big chopper, our finer chopper, and we've got our really fine chopper. So I guess maybe I'll use scissors to get that. This is an herb, um, <laughs> a funny little device that I actually like. It's a little herb scissors and it just chops up herbs into a really nice little fine chop. Great for teas, great for using in culinary purposes, this little herb scissor. Okay, this looks like we've got enough to fill our little, this is actually a cold brew um, thing, but it's really great for teas. There's also tea ones that are just like this, um, but basically load up our fresh cleavers into the cold infusion canister here. And we want to do a cold infusion because um, it has been suggested that warming up the cleavers, boiling the cleavers reduces some of the um, beneficial constituents. Um, it's, it's still fine to do. A lot of people do drink a dry cleaver tea, but if you've got fresh cleavers, this is the way to do it. A nice overnight cold infusion. Um, we get to fill that with water. Ah, <laughs> I'll be right back. Here we go, we got a goodly amount of distilled, or not distilled, uh, filtered water here. And we'll add that in there. And then basically just put that in the fridge overnight 
and that'll make an excellent cold infusion and that's your tea. You can sweeten that with a little stevia, add a little lemon juice or something. It's going to taste essentially like a green lawn clippings. Um, that goes in the fridge overnight. Okay, um, next we're going to make a tincture. So basically we're wanting to chop up enough of the cleavers to fill this jar. We're going to add the vodka. This doesn't need to be so finely chopped. It's going to sit for a while. It can be a normal size chop. You want to chop it somewhere around one inch, two inches there. Wow, this actually goes pretty fast. Here we go. I think we got enough to fill this jar. Let's give it a try. Now you want to get in there with kind of a firm feel, but not extra tight. So we actually have more than we need in this case. So we'll just uh, dust this off over here. And this is our vodka. We're going to add the vodka. We get that right up to the top. Don't want any herb sticking above the vodka line because that herb might discolor and or potentially do other bad things. I always want to make sure that your lid area is clean. You want to make sure there's no herbs sticking out on the sides. Those will discolor and or do bad things. And get that, get that on there. Always remember to label your jar so you don't forget what your tincture is. Now that's going to go, and you're going to want to shake that, and you're going to want to let that sit for about a month at least before you strain that off, and you'll have an excellent um, gallium aparine cleavers tincture. You can leave it in there longer if you like. It doesn't really hurt it. Um, the more often you can get in there and shake it, the better. Ideally, shake it daily. but. Uh, Sometimes that doesn't happen. It doesn't hurt it too much, but more shaken, the more better. Now, the last thing we're going to do is just kind of chop up a bunch of this uh, cleavers to be dried. And with that, we can make a, a nice oil and also we can have it for dried teas later. So this is a little coarse, but it'll work. I'm using here a screen. It's a, it's a nice cheap screen I got from Home Depot. It's just a, like a cheap window screen, but it actually makes a really great drying rack. You want to dry in a cool, dark place, say in a spare room or a, a closet perhaps. Um, but it, it's got to have good circulation, so it shouldn't be like t a really mm, steamy bathroom is not really the good place to dry your herbs. Some a cool dry place, basically, and somewhat dark. Don't put it out in the sun. Let's just chop these guys up for the drying rack. I let these sit overnight, so some of them are looking less attractive than they used to be. Won't use those. These ones are still looking pretty fresh. You don't always have to do all your processing the first day. It is ideal, but often you can 
do it in stages if you have to. And a little bit of darkening of the ends is just, just a little oxidation. Doesn't mean much. Of course, you don't want anything slimy. Really horribly discolored. But some of it just started to dry a little sooner than others. Now, some people, some herbalists say that a great way to dry your herbs is to just gather them loosely in a paper bag, a big paper grocery bag. And if they're fairly loose, you can just kind of leave them in there to dry. And then instead you come back and you cut them or crumble them later after they're already dry, after it's been sitting in that grocery bag. But uh, I don't know, I kind of like in this climate, we're in Oregon, everything's a little bit too moist. So I prefer actually putting it out in the drawing rack. And this drawing rack spreads out. So we want to get this all spread out into a nice fairly thin layer. Let it dry. And this will dry pretty quick. It's a, not a very moist herb. Okay, cool this. I should say dry this in a cool dark place. And you'll be really cool. Because you'll have a whole bunch of cleavers that you can use later on in, in teas, hot teas if you want to. Or as I'm going to use this one to make a rubbing oil to move, to move the lymph. Let's let this dry. I'm going to take this away and we will get back to you when the tea, cold infusion tea is done and when these are dry, we'll make that oil. Okay, here we are. Let's see how this cold infusion looks. Looking good. Go ahead and add a little bit of stevia drops. A little bit of lemon juice. And there you have it. A nice serving of Cleaver's iced tea. Mmm, tastes like grass clippings with a bit of stevia and lemon. Yum! Now feel free to add uh, any kind of juice you'd like. A cranberry juice would be especially great if you're using this for any kind of urinary tract cleansing. Um, you can just add a different kind of tea, iced tea that you made. The flavor of this is not that delightful, but uh, it can certainly be an acquired taste or you can add uh, some embellishments to mask the rather green flavor of this rather tan tea. This is the part where Mindy is not recording any audio. She's too lazy to talk this morning. Look at her stuff the crap into the jar. Stuff that crap. Stuff it. Take that out. Put that back in. No. Oh, she's thinking about saying something, but there's no words. Something about an inch, maybe? Pour in all our good oil so we don't have anything to make french fries anymore. Oh man, that's like five dollars worth of oil right there. Oh, I can't take it. Good lord. Okay. Yep, yep, it's all gone now. Wonderful.
taking some paper towel. Probably wiping the rim. This is one of a million jars that Mindy has. So many jars. I think she just tried to give the thumbs up symbol, but her hand was out of the frame. I don't know. T-ball. Heart. Stuff. Yay. The end. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.